how can we solve x prime equals ax if a has complex eigenvalues? We will do this in the 2 by 2 case. In this case, we know that a is similar to a scaling rotation matrix C. In a linear algebra course, you may have learned how to do this. In this video, we will review the steps, and these steps will give us a complicated final expression for two independent solutions. But how can we memorize this solution? We will also show a trick to memorize and compute the two solutions easily. And similar to the diagonalizable case, we recommend to memorize this final expression. From now on we will often use it without doing all the linear algebra steps in between anymore, because this will allow us to do our computations a bit faster and more smoothly. So what is the idea? We have x prime equals a times x, a is 2 by 2 and similar to a scaling rotation matrix C. Well, you learned how to compute it, compute eigenvalues, lambda equals a plus bi, that will give you your C matrix, you compute the corresponding eigenvector V, that will give you the P matrix, real part of V in the first column, and minus imaginary part of V in the second column. Then we can do the familiar trick, x prime equals a times x, uh, multiply with p inverse on the left, so you get a p inverse x prime, you should do the same at the right hand side, so there you are left with the c and the p inverse times x. And we define as usual y equals p inverse times x, so we are left with y prime equals c times i, so first we solve y prime equals c times y, and using the solution we will find our solution x. So how can we solve y prime equals c times y? You solve this in linear algebra, you know y of t equals e to the power ct times y0. And there you also learned how to compute e to the power ct. Once you have c, so once you have c you know a and b. So e to the power ct will be another scaling rotation matrix, but now with a scaling factor e to the power at and with a rotation angle bt. So this will be our e to the power ct and you can write down your y of t immediately. y of t equals e to the power at times uh, your uh, rotation matrix times an initial condition. And now we will write this uh, general initial condition as c1 minus c2. We include this minus sign here. Uh, we can uh, absorb it of course in c2 if you want, but we include the minus sign here in order to get as our final formula the same formula which is often found in the books. So that's why we include this minus sign here now. Okay, what do we get then? If we now want to compute x of t, we know y equals p inverse times x, so x equals p times y, so x equals p times, and here we have our y, and then we can simplify this a bit. First we take this, this last part here, we have matrix times vector, so we get the c1 times the first column, and uh, uh, minus c2 as, uh, times the second uh, column, and if we compute this uh, product, uh, matrix times vector product, we get this vector over here, so there we are. And again, now we have a matrix, this P here is a matrix times a vector, so similarly, first component of the vector times the first uh, column here, second component of the vector times the second column, and that gives a big mess of course, we just leave the e to the power at there where it is, so this first co component c1 cos bt plus c2 sine bt, here it is, times first column of p here, and the second component is c1 sine bt minus c2 cosine bt, the second scalar, times the uh, second uh, uh, column 
uh, minus mv and uh, take the minus sign inside this expression over here so you get a minus c100 plus c2 so there we are uh, and that is our x of t however you can observe that now we have in fact a c1 times one vector plus a c2 times a second vector which is exactly what we are looking for uh, how do these x1 and x2 look exactly well let's take a look we have a c1 times e to the power a t cos b t real v so that goes into uh, x1 so here it is and we have a c1 times minus sine b t in v e to the power a t there it is so that's the part which goes into x1 our first independent solution and then we have a c2 times the sine bt real part of v and the exponential again goes into the x2 and we have c2 times cos bt and the an mv and of course exponential again and that goes into the x2 so here you see how you can write your final solution x of t as linear combination of two independent solutions x1 and x2 but, but now you see okay you can try to memorize these expressions for x1 and x2 over here uh, but that's a bit annoying they're quite long so okay here we have our solution but how can we memorize it easily now we can do that as follows we define a new complex vector u of t and u of t equals your eigenvector v times e to the power lambda t so your v is complex your e to the power lambda t is also complex okay you can easily memorize what u is of course just takes v times e to the power lambda t that's okay and how is that now related to x1 and x2 now it happens that your first independent solution x1 of t is the real part of this u and your second independent solution x2 of t is the imaginary part of this u so that is how you find uh, your x1 and x2 well let's just check why this is true of course you do this as follows well you know your u of t equals your v times e to the power lambda t so there it is you keep your v your e to the power lambda t becomes e to the power a t times e to the power b i t which is cos b t plus i sine b t so there we go and then you just multiply out so the real part give of this is real v cos bt and here you have minus in v sine bt so that's this part uh, plus i times and then you have a uh, real part of v times sine bt plus imaginary part of cosine bt so there we go so u of t if you write down what it is is this e to the power a t times real v cos bt minus in v sine bt which was exactly our x1 plus i times and then e to the power a t real v sin b t plus m v cos b t which was exactly our x2 so how to memorize this how to do this you compute your v you compute your lambda using this you can compute your u you write your u as a uh, real part plus imaginary part and then your real part is your first independent solution and your imaginary part is your second independent solution